Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cover to Cover. You're here with Mo, I'm Andrea, and Morgan. So today we want to talk about National Book Month, the Astro Poets, finding the new J.K. Rowling. Plus we have a fun video short and a Q&A for you later, so stay tuned. But first, we'd like to say that our hearts go out to the victims of the Las Vegas shooting. This was a tragic event that will forever scar the landscape of Las Vegas and our hearts. And there are a number of ways to get involved and support the victims of this tragedy and a lot of activism to be done. So that's if you were so inclined. Yeah, so our hearts really go out to the victims and the string of natural disasters and all the tragedies that have occurred lately. So, you know, get online, go do something, see what you can do to make a difference and to love on people. Yeah. I know a lot of people are giving blood, like they are waiting in line for five hours even just to make an appointment yeah. to give blood. Yes. And I mean, that's a huge thing because I mean, 500 injured. Yeah, we, our team actually has an employee in Vegas and she said the same thing. She went the next morning to see if she could give blood. Um, very long lines, yeah. but um, she plans to do it. Yeah, so a lot of bad things going on. There's a lot of room for you to make a difference and to try to be a part of a community. So get out there and do that if you can. Yeah. Well, in light of all of that tragedy, you have to find some light in the world, and there is some to find. Um, for example, October is marking National Book Month. That's right, and there are so many ways to celebrate. Libraries and bookstores and all kinds of bookish businesses will be hosting events to celebrate throughout this month. And also, schools will be doing projects, and readers will, of course, be reading. So how will you be celebrating Book Month? I'm kind of excited, because I don't know that I've ever participated in Book Month to, like, any kind of extent. So I'm going to be looking for if there's any fun, like, workshops going on, or, like, what can I do to set goals for myself? Morgan, you mentioned, like, reading goals you could set yeah, in the month of October. Yeah. I try to set a um, reading one book a week goal. Um, I'm struggling with Ambitious. it. Ambitious. And then recently I told my husband I wanted to give up dairy. Oh. And he said, I'll give up dairy with you if you read the new Tim Tebow book. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's a thing. Because it's about high performance. Yeah. And, yeah. and he. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'm sure he gave up dairy and gluten and everything else. Yeah. So I was like. Really? That's what you're saying to me right now? But Yeah, so I think I might try to set some goals for myself and try to actually make a dent in my TBR list. I have like a couple of ongoing books that I'm yeah. going to try to get through and maybe set some writing goals. So nice. that's what I'm looking at. I'm hoping to like make a difference in my reading habits and also in the world, I guess. And so I'm hoping that I can like read I'm making a goal to like read a book and then like give it away so oh that's um, great yeah I always see like folks on like the side of the highway and I've always wanted to like give them something and maybe I don't have like money but maybe like a book might mm -hmm. make a difference in someone's yeah. life so hoping to do that and this yeah. is a great month to celebrate books that's great I love that and one way to celebrate National Book Month is also by getting pumped for forthcoming books that are coming out right October is a really big month mm -hmm. for publishing and so it's just something you can look forward to. I don't know if you guys know any new books that are coming out, but that's what I'm excited about. Yes, and there is an interesting project on the horizon for fans of the Twitter account Astro Poets. The account is run by New York City-based poets Dorothy Lasky and Alex Dimitrov and chronicles a modern look at astrology. The two poets also have a monthly advice column in W Magazine. The book is sure to bring humor, advice, and a modern take on astrology. What do you guys think about that? I feel like this is such a perfect book for Tiffany because she's really <laughs> yeah. into astrology and like assigning books to your zodiac sign. So this is a book all about your zodiac sign, but in modern terms. So that would be really cool to see. I love the way that they have their Twitter account set up. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's so funny. I mean, it's they're talking about how you know so much has changed over the past few decades. So why not update astrology? And so they put like modern takes on it. So it'll be like an encounter between two people, and mm. it's like someone bawling, and the other person's like, "Oh, you're a Virgo." Uh, yeah, <laughs> and just things like that. So I think this book is going to be really funny, and I am interested in learning a little bit more about astrology. So I'll have to check that one out. What do you think, Morgan? I've never taken it seriously, but mm. I just like it for the entertainment value. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. Can't wait to see it. Well, let us know in the comments what you think about this modern take on astrology and if there are some other upcoming books you're looking forward to. But right now, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we got more news and a fun video short for you. So we'll be right back.
Well, we all love the queen, J.K. Rowling, but we're all thinking it. Who is the next Rowling in the making? One publishing entrepreneur is making it a goal to find the next protege. Inkit, the Berlin-based publisher, has created a sophisticated algorithm that can supposedly help them identify books and authors with bestseller potential. They launched last year, and 37 of their books have been published. 24 have become bestsellers, and 20 have made the top 100 lists. And this is a staggering success rate by publishing standards. So what do you guys think about formulaic publishing like this? Well, I think with numbers like that, it must be working well because that's something like 65%. That's crazy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I th always think it's kind of weird when you bring like formula into like a creative world. I'm like, oh, there's the right brainer like coming in. Yeah. Girl, my, you know, my husband is a songwriter, and he said it's writing catchy songs is very much a formula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he learned that very quickly in Nashville. Yeah. When he lived there. Um, so I see it. I would love to know what's in the algorithm. Right, me too. Yeah. What they say is important and not important, and that could help other, you know, potential people who want to write and publish yeah. books. You know, we've talked about it before, like mystery novels definitely have a certain formula. There's like a whole method to that. And even with fantasy novels and lots of other stuff. So there is, so it is weird to think about like this creative art form as being able to be boiled down into like a structured formula, but it does kind of have that rhythm for success. So it's interesting. I guess. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I also am interested in that algorithm and would like to know the details of that so I could work that into my life. <laughs> well, um, we will have to keep our eyes open for some of those books being published since uh -huh. their formula seems to work and <laughs> must be great books and great authors. But in the meantime, we got a fun video short for you illustrating the difficulties of the single life from a literary lover's pers perspective. So let's check it out. So, guys, this is a judgment-free zone, right? This is a sort of safe place, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got a Tinder. What? What? <laughs> no. It's so hard to meet guys these days. Shut up. You got a Tinder. So, I see? guess, well, okay. Anyway, all right, so, um, here. Okay. Here's the first guy. Edward Cullen. My personality really sparkles, my strongest emotion is angst, and I rarely smile. Currently married for eternity, just looking to make friends, so my daughter will quit judging me for being so lonely. Hmm. Um, that marriage thing's kind of a bummer, but he is cute. Look at those jaw bones. Yeah. Is that glitter on his cheek? For an extra treat, Google hashtag suns out, funds out. Is he joking? Is that a joke? Maybe he's funny. I like funny guys. I just, I don't know, I, uh, he is super good looking, you know, he would outlive you, but he's married. Yeah. Yeah, he is married. And for eternity. That's, that's, a, that's like... a really big commitment. Also, he's 116, which you guys know that I like older dudes, but I don't know. I don't know, but me personally, I like them a little bit more hairier. Uh, <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Swipe left, swipe left. Okay. Sauron, old AF. He has so many followers. About Sauron, dark overlord seeking endlessly to be reunited with my one and only, my precious. I believe in magnetic attraction and that if it's meant to be, it will come back around. Persistence is my strong suit and I'm always watching. I foster thousands of orcs every year. Aww. And I give them purpose through warring with our neighboring nations. Okay, well. Uh, looking for something serious. And ladies should know I have an eye for jewelry. Hashtag the one ring. Hashtag have you seen it. Hashtag help. Oh my god. Oh my god. You guys, this dude is awesome. He could be the one. He? He's old. He's like 10,000 years He's old. He's just like really like mature, I think. 10,000 years old. And who cares? He likes jewelry. Think about it. He likes jewelry, which you know, I love jewelry. And he fosters orcs. That's a thing he does out of the goodness of his heart. I think we should swipe right on this dude. Okay. I think we need to know more. All right. Swipe right. 
Okay, uh, big brother. Every breath you take, every move you make, every bond you break, every step you take, I'll be watching you. Most people call me big brother, but you can call me big daddy. Oh. I see what he did there. He likes music. Okay. But if we just for a second think about the contents of the lyrics, um, I'm gonna go with no. It's such a great song, though. Okay, but like, he's always listening. It's like when your cell phone is listening and you're like, oh, I could really go for some tacos today. I really like tacos. And then your cell phone sends you a coupon for tacos. That's what this dude is saying he wants to do for you. Okay. Uh, there might be like maybe no. a red flag or two. No, it's no different than Facebook. Come on. No, hard pass. <laughs> red flags. We're not doing it. Red flags. He will so sing fun. to you. You can't. He will woo you. Do this. Oh my gosh, I can't do this. Come on. Swipe left. Swipe left. Thank you. <sighs> Thank God. Well, let me see that one. Benjamin Button. I like the name. He's adorable. He is cute as a button, I think. Aww. So, his profile says, 70 is the new toddler. Only getting younger ladies. Looking for a date to my 69th birthday. If you're into the whole cougar thing, call me in 30 years. Smiley face. Mm, so many questions. That math doesn't seem to check out. A lot of questions. A lot of questions, yes. I don't even under... Oh. You guys, I just got a coupon for free tacos. Free tacos? Yeah. I right. guess yeah, so. We hope you enjoyed our literary Tinder video. Let us know in the comments what you think about the dating potential or if there's some other characters you would like to swipe right on. Right. And speaking of you telling us things, we asked you guys a question on Facebook and you answered. Harry Potter is one of the most re-readable series of all times, and we asked how many rereads you've gone through. We had a ton of responses, so thank you for interacting. And it seems like a lot of our followers have reread upwards of seven times or more. For sure. I know that I've read them at least that many times, because I'm that girl that totally reads each book before the new release. Mm. So you guys let us know in the comments if you're a big rereader, and how many times have you reread Harry Potter? Or what are some other books that you find incredibly rereadable? Do you guys have any favorite books that are rereads? Because I need to write that down. Yes, okay. I always go to like some of my young adult faves, like The Giver and The Outsiders, because they were just like so impactful in my life. And yeah. also, A Walk to Remember. Girl, I read that so many times. And then The Five People You Meet in Heaven. Sorry, okay. So yeah, that, those are my faves. Books to those are my favorites. But A Walk to Remember, I know you feel me. It's such a good <laughs> book. And I love the movie, but the book is better than the movie. And it like it yes. tugged at my heart, and I cried even more reading the book. Aww. Yes. But, yeah. Guys, I don't reread anything. And that's what? totally fine. No, I just, I don't do it. Not like a single Nicholas Sparks book, because I, I know you're a huge fan of his. No. A lot of people don't. A lot of people are like, I've done it once. Why would I, like, bog down my TBR list by yeah. throwing in a reread? Which is, like always such a hard decision to make like I'm there all the time like I really want to reread this yeah. impactful thing but also like new books so right maybe that's not a bad method I mean for me I'm so sentimental that I have to relive those moments but like I get where you're coming from I do you know what's coming next I just don't understand yeah even with movies there's maybe one or two mm. movies that I've Rewatch. Well, maybe rewatch or two. Yeah, I like to I relive just... the past a lot. I think. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I've definitely like downloaded a few audiobooks, and it's like those things are expensive. So I've gone through like you know <laughs> recycled those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us know in the comments what you enjoy rereading, and let me know if I'm just crazy. I'm missing out <laughs> on something, and what your most reread book is. And again, thank you so much for interacting with our Facebook posts. And this is helping us bring more content that you guys care about. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, well, thanks for joining us today. I'm Mo. I'm Andrea. I'm Morgan. And we will, of course, be back on Friday, October 6, 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central Time. Until then, keep reading, writing, and being awesome. <laughs> I know we will. Bye. Bye. Bye.